So we're here at the NXP here at Mobile World Congress. So hello, so who are you? Martin Humphreys, hello. And uh, here you have a big uh, Amazon Echo. That's right, yeah, we're, uh, we're one of the partners uh, on Echo um, and uh, basically what is happening with, uh, with the world of uh, voice and voice control. Um, we've been doing a lot of work uh, over the last uh, you know, year or two supporting that with our ARM processors. We have a, an entire range of, uh, of IMX processors and uh, today um, we, we can actually use the ARM processors to actually run voice algorithms or that can be done on internal DSPs. So we really are supporting all the efforts that Amazon's doing with Alexa. We're actually in uh, one of our products on IMX6 is in uh, the Alexa tap. So uh, you've seen that from Amazon and uh, that's, uh, that's something that we're doing. In addition to Amazon, obviously there's other ecosystems for voice control and the IMX processor range is really good for all of that. We're also working very closely with Google and uh, Google Things, uh, there was an announcement uh, a few months ago, uh, just prior to the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, and uh, we're working with Google uh, on uh, platforms uh, for voice control uh, f uh, for them as well. So IMX is really big for that. So what's the challenge to make voice control work? Yeah. And and how is IMX perfect for that? Is, it, uh, is ARM Cortex A9, right, the IMX6? Yeah, so today we, uh, we use uh, IMX6, uses uh, Cortex A9. Um, we use a, a multi-core processor, typically a quad processor for that. Um, so we're able to run the different uh, speech algorithms on, on, on multi-core, multi-threading. So that's, uh, that's a big advantage for what we're doing with ARM. Uh, we're also, uh, we've, we're actually, we have voice uh, solutions on IMX7. That's actually a dual core A7 processor from ARM, and that gives you a very low power capability as well. And then the new generation of IMX8 processors will be using uh, A53s and A35s and A72s. So between from IMX6 through IMX7 into IMX8, we really have the full range of, of ARM processors. And a lot of this really comes down to sort of um, high performance multi-threading capability and running those type of algorithms. So when did you announce IMX8, and when is it when is it coming? So uh, there's been uh, there's a whole family of IMX8 coming out. The first one uh, was or the first two have already been announced. That was the what we call the IMX8 uh, Quad Max family, and that's a, a very uh, high performance automotive type product, but also for heavy industrial as well. Uh, back at Consumer Electronics Show, we announced uh, the IMX8 M, which is for media. And this is a family of products that does uh, high performance video, high performance audio, and also you know, voice control systems. So they are, they're both announced, and then there's another announcement that will be happening uh, in a few weeks, actually, uh, at Embedded World. And I can't really talk more about that, but that will round out the family. So what we've been able to do with the, with the IMX8 family is move right the way from in, uh, the uh, high performance automotive through industrial right into the consumer world as well. So this uh, this whole work and the expertise that Freescale brings brings to NXP is a uh, uh, there's a lot of knowledge on how to really use those chips and real products and it's stable it really works. Yeah. So one of the big advantages, right, is the fact that um, we have a, a massive ecosystem of partners uh, for IMX. I mean, built up over many years. I, mean, I think it's I think it's probably probable that we're uh, the, the widest uh, district. You know. Uh, seller of, of APs worldwide, um, you know, uh, tens of thousands of customers using the IMX family across all these different uh, applications. The thing that's, that's really important about what we've done is we've actually um, worked very closely, as I said, with Amazon and, and, uh, and Google initially to bring voice. We're also working with HomeKit, we're working with uh, Microsoft as well and Katana. So we're looking at all of the ecosystems for voice. But the key is that Customers who trust us and have worked with us for many years on applications processes could be making a refrigerator or a coffee machine or controlling uh, some light bulb. And they don't know how to do voice control, but they know about what we've done with IMX and, and we're able to really help them and enable them to, to, to bring uh, voice control to everyday products. And so I think we're seen as one of the trusted companies uh, that can supply not only the the applications processor, but the software to run on it. Uh, a whole ecosystem supported. Yes. All, uh, everything just works. Yeah, we put we, we basically 
uh, enable our board partners and make sure that we have everything from, from, the, from the processor to the I.O. to the software to the firmware, yeah. You see some of the examples right here. Are they, uh, are, are some of these devices running? There's uh, IMAX in here, for example, and the Kindle. Yeah, so basically in the Kindle we have uh, the IMX 6s and IMX 7 processors. We've obviously been a big partner for many years with Amazon, and I think we're, we're, we've been seen well and trusted in those areas. And voice. Uh, it's all about recording the sound, uh, low latency, transmitting to other parts, and going in the cloud and coming back. It needs it, to be really yeah, it, smooth it's, it's and all fast. Of that. I mean, it needs really, to feel instant. Right. So, so basically, what we're doing from a voice perspective is that obviously the smarts are, are in the uh, the way that we can actually handle. Um, whatever voice algorithms come our way, handle them very quickly, efficiently, and, and with, you know, a, 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 at low power, right? Because a, a lot of these devices really are just waiting for an event. So you have to be able to put them into a low power mode and then be able to quickly turn on the power very rapidly and then be able to process that either locally or, or basically then push it up to the cloud. And uh, there's, uh, over here it's more like uh, NFC, I think. Maybe, yeah, uh, so but that's this, uh, NXP is the, basically is NFC is That's right, yeah. We're, that. we're obviously, uh, I think, the lead supplier of, of NFC products as well, so. And, uh, and, uh, lots of other stuff that NXP is doing, but uh, how is it uh, a great combination to have a free scale technology yeah. come into NXP? Yeah. Why was it a great uh, I, th I think I think basically when the two companies came together, uh, you know, they both had, had established markets in their own right. Um, Certainly, uh, you know, if you think about NXP, they had uh, connectivity, they, they had NFC type products, they were in, a, a, again, another a very wide market trusted brand. The same with Freescale. Freescale was able to bring applications, processors, and microcontrollers, and add it together with the NXP microcontrollers to bring, I think, probably the largest portfolio in the world now for microcontrollers as well. All right, can we see some of the examples that are being used here? Uh, so what is uh, what is shown off over here? Hello. Hi. Hello. So who, Hi. what are you showing here? Yeah, what we're showing here is um, our technology, which is um, new magnetic conductive yep. radio. And um, the advantage we have with this technology simply is um, you can do audio streaming from the left earbud to the right earbud by using this NFMI technology, which is 10.56 megahertz, um, which you usually can't do with um, with Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So it's synchronized. It is uh, synchronized. Both ears here. Both ears. You can do audio streaming. Um, you can do um, binocular listening. You can do um, stereo listening. All this kind of things you can do with NFMI technology. And what is the chip? What is, what is inside? The chip. It's a radio. It's a. It's a. Is uh, it an ARM Cortex M0 or something? There is an ARM um, processor integrated. You have um, audio blocks in there, like audio codec. You have. Um, a Kuflux um, DSP integrated, you have the NFMI radio in there, and you have SPI, ISPC interface, and stuff like that. So it's, um, it goes into uh, all these kinds of products, and yeah. so it's in mass production. It is, this device is in mass production. Um, the device that we have, it's called NXH2280 currently. Uh, we have another device, which is the NXH2281. This is um, the, the latest version that we have with an improved audio um, processing functionality, so um, higher audio bandwidth, um, this, tech, um, this um, functionality that this device has. Cool, all right. right. Thanks a lot. That was all? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. So uh, around here, uh, there's uh, some connected oh, cars over there. Yeah, there's a, we'll introduce you to uh, the automotive team. So uh, the automotive team is a big deal in the future. Everybody's going to have self-driving cars, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So hi, so who are you? Sorry? Uh, who, who are you? Hello, uh, my name is Cosmin. I am the technical leader from Linux BSP team, Romania, and I'm working in the automotive department for uh, platform like Blue Box, Three Runner, and IDOTMI 6. So right here you have a 64-bit uh, ARM. Is it Cortex A72? Uh, so, 53? This version of board is a heterogeneous board. We have two boards, in fact, two SOCs connected via PCI Express. One is automotive certified and has four A53 cores and one M4 core for the real-time part. And the other one is the landscape second, which has eight uh, 
57 cores. A57 cores? Yeah, right. A57 cores. All right. And uh, you do all kinds of uh, software solutions, some, some, uh, everything that's needed for self-driving cars. Yes. Everything works on it? Yeah, it was. It works perfectly because if you have the tool chain and also the proper operating system, you can put over it uh, open standards like OpenCL, OpenCV, or OpenMPI. All right, cool. So uh, how soon can we buy an, a self-driving car with this technology inside? We hope as soon as possible. It's very soon, right? Next year, maybe. We hope. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, there's lots of chips uh, over here being used for the, the car industry, right? Uh, if I go around here. But that's my level all the risk. If you look at all these chips right here. Now we're talking about connected. So you get a risk, you would be promoting Yes. Can you talk about the, the chips that are being provided right here for the car industry? Uh, there are a... Uh, <laughs> Hi, sorry. I got <laughs> Yeah, these they, uh, these are a lot of uh, chips for the uh, uh, the automotive industry. So these are, are these ARM processors. We have different uh, categories here in different corners of the demonstrator. So this one is the security, but we are kind of security. <laughs> yeah, this is the security area where we have yeah. the uh, four plus one um, security um, yeah scheme. Basically, four plus one means we are uh, adding four layers of security to to secure the the vehicle. Level one would be to actually secure the outside, the gates, the interfaces. Uh, level two would be secure the gateway, so the electronics that are uh, inter-processing inter within the car. Um, then uh, network security within the vehicle is very important. And then also uh, secure the mic controllers. And the plus one is basically the car access. It's very important. All the cars are getting connected to the internet, but none right. of them are secure, right? <laughs> well, they so are far. secure. Yeah. Well, they are secure already. I, yeah. Of course, there's already uh, security uh, measures uh, taken place. Is this solution already in, in cars? Well, I cannot say, but uh, let's say the um, for sure the industry is looking into that, and there's a lot of a lot of things ongoing. Uh, uh, so how to protect and and, uh, and what to protect, and I think our scheme. For protection is, is within these four layers. Nice. And what are we looking at on the other side over here? Uh, right here is uh, um, NXP's V2X chipset. What is a V2X? Is it ARM? Uh, this is a V2X chipset for uh, vehicle to vehicle and uh, vehicle infrastructure uh, communications as well as the radar. Uh, um, the, the V2X chipset is basically. Um, um, the technology that you need to uh, that cars will actually interact which is with uh, with each other and with the infrastructure is it the uh, arm arm cortex uh, I'm not sure about the the uh, I, I must say <laughs> no problem and over here another whole bunch of chips and this is a so you're from arm no yeah. no arm devices, devices. This is uh, for audio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our audio chipsets here. Um, Mercury is a multi standard stuff. Uh, oh, no. yeah. 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 Cool, and then we have over here uh, some, last, uh, some last over here. So that's the car. Sorry, I need to, uh, I need to take okay. over. Thank you.